Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you all of the programming projects I did while getting a bachelor's degree in computer science from a Norwegian university. I think this video is going to be a really nice indicator on what you can expect to learn from a bachelor's degree in computer science as I will be covering every single project from the first semester until my final bachelor thesis in the last semester. So yeah, let's just get started. I have compiled a list of all of the courses that included programming projects. So I have excluded everything that is just theoretical and only included the practical ones. And in total, we see that we only have five projects for an entire bachelor's degree. So let's start with the first one. First project is called crib advisor <laughs> and this was for a course called web technologies so as the name might suggest we created a website let's check it out boom this is crib advisor <laughs> it's a website built using plain old html javascript and css so no fancy javascript frameworks here and the text is in norwegian i'm not going to translate it but this is yeah the website doesn't really do anything, it just has some buttons that navigates you to different pages and uh, I think it includes a form that really does nothing, it's just... I guess it was a practice for us to just create uh, layouts using HTML, so yeah, that's how this looks. And is it responsive? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, or it is actually. So that's very nice. Now let's quickly take a look at the code and see if we can find anything of interest index page normal html like i mentioned script this is where all the javascript files are so the navbar is created programmatically it looks like very cool and yeah i guess there's not really much more to cover in this one Okay, next project. This was in my second semester at university. It's a project that I actually really like. It's called Fish Fisher. So let's check it out. Okay, so Fish Fisher was created for the course Object Oriented Programming, which I think might be like the most useful course throughout the entire bachelor's degree. It's like very hands-on programming. You learn uh, how to do object-oriented stuff like uh, game development with Java. Now, the only gripe I have with this course is that we have to use an ancient framework called JavaFX, which is from many moons ago, but hey, what can you do? So let's boot this up and check out what Fish Fisher has to offer. And boom, we have it open. So you have probably heard of the game Cookie Clicker. This is very similar, except you click on a fish. Now <laughs> you can click on fish and you can buy upgrades like this seagull. This seagull will help you fish. And I now have one FPS which stands for fish per second. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You can also reset your game. And I also included like uh, an import, which already have a couple of upgrades. So it won't be too boring for like the examinators to check it out. And yeah, this is Fish Fisher, probably my favorite project from the entire bachelor's degree. It's by a tourist and okay, he didn't show up. So I guess the game is kind of bugged, but fuck it. I guess we can quickly look at some of the code. Like I said, we use the framework JavaFX and everything is managed by this game controller I have. So we start a game loop, we update the fish splashes and update the text and whatever. And uh, yeah, do some calculations whenever you click on the fish. And now we will check out the next project. Okay, so the next project is called CardSnap and this was created in my third semester at uni. So I had already been studying for an entire year and this is also kind of an interesting project as it includes both a Java backend and a React frontend. So uh, yeah, I've opened this in IntelliJ as well. And we can see in my readme, we have a screenshot of the project, but I guess I can boot it up as well. 
So yeah, <laughs> we'll start by building the application using Maven and then afterwards we can go into the front-end project, install it and then start it using uh, Yarn. Okay, and like we see here, the build is failing and I really can't be bothered with trying to get this up and running. So I think you'll just have to accept this screenshot as the demo of the application. So what this application was, was a, like I mentioned, React frontend and Java backend, Spring Boot. Uh, and it was a application where you could create like memory cards and practice uh, studying terms and stuff. Yeah. And um, I guess one thing that's kind of interesting for this project is that uh, there was a lot of focus on testability. So we actually ended up creating end-to-end -end tests using Playwright. We created unit tests for both the front-end and back-end. And uh, also we used snapshot testing for the front-end. So yeah, a lot of uh, stuff went into creating this project. And uh, I would say it was uh, kind of a fun course. Okay, now, quick intermission. Before continuing, we will hear a word from today's sponsor. Let's go. It's still me here. I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently posting a lot more on my Patreon page. So if you are interested in seeing more videos, then this is definitely the place to do so. Thanks. Next up, we have the project called Bookworm, which was created in my fourth semester at uni. This was also a web project and for the technology chosen here, we again used React for our front-end stuff. And instead of having a self-written backend, we used Firebase to manage users and also data for the website. So we can quickly start this up, I think. It's a React app created using Vite. So let's go to this address and boom, you're greeted with a landing page and a bunch of ads. So there was some requirements for this website, which is like a Goodreads clone basically. And one of the requirements was that we had to have ads and yeah, like most ads, it ended up looking horrible, but fuck it, <laughs> who cares? So all of the data in this application is fetched from our Firestore database. And you can, from inside the application itself, add more data if you want, add more books. You can click around, favorite stuff, write reviews, toggle dark mode, check out like top lists, new books that are added and also you have an explore page but i don't really think there's much logic to any of this but yeah it looks uh, how it looks and uh, works how it works i do think these cards kind of look good and just like uh, card snap the previous application this is also styled using tailwind so it ended up being kind of a similar project to at least technology wise like the last one and is there anything oops and let's check out if there is anything special about the application itself that i want to check out i mean for state management we used react context which is very nice and uh, yeah other than that i think we don't really have to go into much more detail on how every component is built and, and stuff. So yeah, that was Bookworm. And now we'll check out the next project. Next up, we have two projects from the last semester at uni. So these projects I did this year. Let's start off with chess. Okay, so chess, as you may know, is a board game. And in this course, which was called Programming Architecture, we were assigned to create any game for mobile and we decided on doing chess and one of the requirements for the course was that the game would have multiplayer support so we added firebase and using the firebase real-time database we added support for multiplayer uh, gameplay so if i select both of these devices i can actually boot this up and we will check it out okay now the app is running on two different simulators at once so from one of the simulators i can start an online game and from <laughs> the other one i can join an existing game five five four six join game Okay, the keyboard didn't really disappear. Maybe I can hit this button, boom, like that. And we can start 
playing chess. So let's quickly get ourselves in a position where we can do a checkmate. If I now move up here, we can go for the final kill. Boom! And what happened? Did it crash? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> something happened. Anyways, I think you get uh, a good idea. Yeah, and uh, one more thing we did on this is that we added a bunch of different game modes. So if we, for instance, would like to play Horde Chess, play, boom, check it out. Everything works and you can play locally against yourself online like I just showed you. And yeah, so I would say that uh, that just like the object-oriented programming course, uh, this course is also very was also very valuable. I really like uh, building games actually, and uh, I think you learn a lot of programming concepts from there. So, because this was a programming architecture course, we put a lot of em emphasis on trying to wrap our head around how to use different programming architectures and for this game we used the model view view model architecture and yeah it ended up being a kind of a fun course actually and last but not least i of course did a project for my bachelor thesis so this project was actually done by a real customer called hipso and what hipso is is a research lab on the university that does satellite development and they currently have one research satellite in orbit and what me and my group did was that we created a Slack bot that would alert whenever any anomalies happened on the satellite. So I don't really think I'm allowed to show the actual code or the actual project but I can give you some insight on what we had to do. So we ended up using Python and the library called Bolt which is just um, a really easy way to interact with Slack, the me messaging platform. And in total, I would say that like the amount of code required for this project was like, it wasn't really a lot. Like the Slack client itself is maybe, what is this, like 15 lines of code. And the logic we had to create to analyze if any anomalies existed on the satellite was also like, 40 more lines of code. So, so in general, we ended up kind of speedrunning it and spent most of the time writing our thesis, which of course also is an important part of uh, studying at like an academic level, I guess. In summary, the project ended up being very successful and it is now used by the Hipso team. Yeah, so although kind of time consuming with the whole writing stuff, it was also Kind of fun to have a project for an actual customer for once. Okay, so what can we learn from this? Those were all the projects I did while getting my computer science bachelor's degree. And looking back, kind of doesn't feel like a lot, does it? Remember that this is done over the span of three entire years. You can wing most of these projects kind of easily, so it is definitely possible to get an entire degree without really learning too much about programming. Now, what is worth noting is that if you actively choose to be a good student and you select difficult courses and really apply yourself doing this, I think you, of course, have uh, some great opportunities to learn uh, both by yourself and with others. But for me personally, I did not choose the most difficult courses because I was working as a developer on the side while studying. And additionally, I did a lot of volunteering while studying, which actually included a lot of programming. So let's check that out. First off, we have wienstraf.no, which is created by the group .com, which basically creates a bunch of different stuff for the computer science students at our school. So this is a website where you can very easily keep track of how much alcohol money you owe your fellow students. So I created most of the front end for this website. And as you can see here, this is my summary where people can say, okay, you owe some wine money for this and check out this emoji picker. Holy. So sick, I really like it. And I can react with it and it's kind of slow, but you know what? It works, so uh, hell yeah. Anyways, this was super fun and was basically most of the stuff I did uh, while being part of this group.com. 
And last but not least, this is definitely the coolest project I did while studying, was that I got to be a part of the group called Orbit NTNU, which built this satellite. And I actually got to write some code that is now flying around in space, which is kind of bonkers to think about. So I actually created the most of this website as well. And here you can see the satellite in its development phase. And yeah, let's check it out. SelfieSat is perhaps the world's first meme satellite. So the entire thing is that it has a small display on the front side. It's about yeah, a bit bigger than this uh, statue thingy. It has a display on the front where it can show images. And the idea was that I should be able to, from Earth, take a selfie of myself, send it up to the satellite, and the satellite would display the selfie on the screen, pull out a selfie stick, which you can see here, flip itself around to have Earth in the background, take a selfie, and send the image back to Earth. Now, everything miraculously worked, except that the display on the selfie set was not glued properly to the body and it ended up flipping up during launch and uh, yeah these are the types of images we have been getting so it's been in space for 756 days while i'm recording this and uh, yeah it's super crazy to think about actually so it was launched on the falcon 9 rocket by spacex uh, two years ago and i actually got to fly out to cape canaveral in florida to see the launch myself which was so sick and yeah here are some uh, sample images uh, from it so yeah this was definitely the most rewarding project from the entire bachelor degree and uh, what's super cool about this was that the entire project was built by students working voluntarily so a lot of smart people were a part of this project and um, i was lucky enough to join the year before launch and it was just en enough time to be able to contribute with some code as well as experience the launch and be a part of everything so yeah super cool project super cool experience and uh, if you want to read more about it i would suggest checking out this website orbitentenew.com and um, i guess the takeaway from this video is that the experience you get out of university really boils down to how much effort you put in yourself so if I were to study again, I would definitely be part of volunteer projects. Those are the most fun and most rewarding in my opinion. And for the half-assing uh, the courses, I would say, forget, go for it. <laughs>